I look pale as a ghost, but I guess that's fitting because it is spooky season. Okay, so since turning 21, I've always wanted to make a video like this. In fact, I tried to make a video like this when I did turn 21, and well, that video got very sloppy very fast. So we're gonna try it again in this format. I was just in Hamlet, so I know a lot about it. And since it's spooky season, I decided what better Shakespeare play to talk about than Hamlet, where, spoiler alert, everyone dies. I know what you're thinking, Macbeth is way spookier than Hamlet, but last time I read Macbeth was high school, and let's be real, I didn't actually read it. Let's get this party started. Act one, scene one. Our story takes place in Elsinore, Delaware. I mean, Denmark. Elsinore, Denmark. <laughs> we start off with our two pals, Bernardo and Francisco, and they're talking about this ghost that they've been seeing throughout the night. Every time they're on guard, they see this ghost and it freaks them out and they don't like it because who likes getting haunted? Not I. Then their friends, Horatio and Marcellus, come to town. Oh, and Francisco leaves. He's out of here. And Bernardo starts telling these guys about the ghost that he's been seeing. And Horatio's kind of like on the fence about it. He's like, mm, I don't really know if there's like a ghost. I think you're making this all up. Let's find out. And lo and behold, the ghost visits them. Here he is. But if they took a closer look and just turned him around, they would have realized he was a floating shopping list all this time. And they all agree that they should definitely tell Hamlet about it. Act two, no, act one, scene two. So this is our boy Hamlet, who is no other than Benedict Cumberbatch because obviously. And then we have our new king, Claudius, who just came into power because the old king died. Hamlet's mother, Gertrude. She is just as useful as a Renaissance painting, so that's why I went with this woman. So basically in this scene, we have King Claudius going off about how their new arrangement is basically Gertrude and him are married because she can't survive without a man, obviously. This upsets Hamlet because this is his uncle and this is his mother. And that, oh, he didn't want his mom to get remarried so quickly after his father's death. So Claudius is not too keen of Hamlet. He's, you know, obviously going on and on about how sad he is, how mad that his uncle is his new daddy. So Claudius tells Hamlet that you're not going back to school. You're staying right here where I can keep an eye on you. Then we have good old Laertes who ba Oh my God, what happened to Laertes? Then we have good old Laertes, Laertes, who's there to just say, hey, my job is done here and uh, I'm gonna go to England now. Then after everyone leaves, Hamlet has a whole soliloquy about how sad he is and his good old friend, Horatio, which keeping on with our theme of Benedict Cumberbatch and Sherlock, cause you know, they're good buddies in the show. So Horatio tells Hamlet that he's pretty sure the ghost he saw last night while he was on duty was his father, Hamlet Sr. And Hamlet Jr. is like, yo, I gotta check this out. Act one, scene three. So Laertes goes to say goodbye to his sister, Ophelia, who's been kind of getting buddy-buddy with our good boy Hamlet. And his departing words are, like, I really appreciate it if you did not hook up with Hamlet. And she's like, eh, you can't tell me what to do. But then their father, Polonius comes in and he can tell her what to do. So what does he have to say, you might ask? I'll tell you. So he says goodbye to his son Laertes, but first he's like, what the heck are you still doing here? You should be on a boat to England by now. And Laertes finally leaves. Polonius sticks around to talk to his daughter Ophelia because he's not blind to the hanky-panky that's been going on between her and Hamlet. He basically just tells her, hey, I forbid you from seeing this guy. Very much like Mother Gothel forbade Rapunzel from going out of the tower, which is why Polonius is Mother Gothel. Side note. Kate Winslet is just all like, but daddy, I love him. Well, it's too bad because men make the rules in these days. So now we're on to act one, scene 
four, baby. So we have Hamlet and his good buddy Horatio and their other good buddy, Marcellus, out on the watch. And who comes in? I'll give you a hint. The ghost. And he's like, hey, Hamlet, come with me. I got some things to tell you. And basically the ghost, who is Hamlet Sr., his father, lays down the truth. He spits bars. That's lame. I can't believe I just said that. Sorry. So he basically tells Hamlet that he was murdered, ladies and gentlemen, by his brother, who is now the king. So, and he wants Hamlet to get revenge on his death. And Hamlet's like, you got it, daddy-o. His two friends, Horatio and Marcellus, come back and join him. And they're like, yo, what happened, man? And he's like, listen, guys, do me this solid and never tell a single person what you witnessed tonight. And we're like, yo, man, we got you. Bro code for life. <laughs> Act two, babies, let's go. So act two kicks off hot with Polonius, our good friend, sending this guy to go spy on his son in England. While he does this, he comes across his daughter, Ophelia, who's freaking out because she's like, Hamlet's acting weird, I don't know what to do, please help me. Polonius takes her and is like, yo, we're going to tell the king about this right now because I'm 99.9999999999999999% sure that it, he's bugging out because he's in love with you. And he's going off to play tattletale to tell the king about Hamlet's crazy behavior. Act two, scene two. So these dudes, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern show up, which I've depicted as Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Gertrude and Claudius sent for them so that they could spy on Hamlet and like get the dirt about what he's planning and what he knows and what the deal is. And if we know anything about snitches, they get stitches. Foreshadowing? Could be. Let's find out, ladies. Claudius and Ophelia are just hanging out when Polonius marches in and is like, hey, I'm pretty sure I got the T on your son. He's going crazy because he's in love with my daughter. I'm not allowing them to be together. He comes in with receipts. He comes in with a note written to Ophelia from Hamlet that says, yo, I'm in love with you. What does it say? Hold on, let me think of the line. Oh dear Ophelia, I'm ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best, O oh, most best, believe it I do. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him, Hamlet. I just played that role, which is why I know that. I'm not just like this freak. Anyway, he convinces Claudius that they should spy on Hamlet and Ophelia when they're together so that he can prove that Hamlet is in love with her. And Claudius is like, all right, let's try it. But before they can do anything about it, Hamlet comes marching in, reading a book, and acting crazy. This is the classic words, words, words scene. Polonius dismisses himself once he sees our good pals, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. And he's like, hey, you guys, watch Hamlet because I'm tired of this. So he goes and gets the actors because Hamlet is planning on putting on a play. This is the first time Hamlet has seen them, even knows that they're a part of this mess now. And he's like, yo, what are you guys doing here? Just like, tell me the truth. like. And they're like, no, we're just like coming to hang out. And Hamlet's like, I know that's not true. Yeah, like your mom and your new dad, like reached out to us, they wanted us to come. And he was like, all right, great. So you're just in time for the play I'm gonna put on. Hamlet has another soliloquy about how he's going to entirely write his own play depicting the death of his father and basically traject the whole play, the whole plot forward. Act three, scene one, baby. We got the Grim Reaper on standby. So we start off this puppy with Claudius and Gertrude questioning our good pals, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, about what the heck's going on with their son. And they inform them that, hey, he seems to be doing pretty good. He's actually gonna put on a play for you later tonight. And they're like, great, that sounds like a normal, healthy activity for a young adult male to do while we're holding him captive 
in our home. So now Polonius is all about trying to execute his plan of spying on Hamlet and Ophelia so he can finally seal the deal to Claudius that they're in love and they shouldn't be together and yada yada yada. Polonius and Claudius go behind a curtain together to spy on the interaction between Ophelia and Hamlet. So Hamlet comes out and has his famous to be or not to be moment. And then he tells Ophelia that she should run away to a nunnery because things are gonna get real messy here. So she should probably just go somewhere else and like save herself. Claudius is still not convinced that it's love that's making Hamlet crazy. And Polonius is like really sure that it's love. Like for someone who really doesn't want Hamlet to be in love with his daughter, He's like really sure that Hamlet's in love with his daughter. Being the quick guy he is, Polonius comes up with another scheme and is like, hey, this is what we're gonna do. After the play, you're gonna have his mother go up to him and try to get him to tell us why he's acting the way he is because he'll be truthful with her because at this point, she's the only one that he trusts in the, in the kingdom, right? And Claudius is like, you know what? Also not a bad idea. I trust you with my life. Let's do it. Act three, scene two. Everyone's there to see the play. And the play is exactly what Hamlet said it was going to be, which is a reenactment of his father's death and then his uncle marrying his father's ex-wife, Gertrude. Claudius picks up on this, gets real mad, asks what the title of the play is. It's The Mouse Trap and storms off and makes a huge scene. Act three, scene three. Polonius comes in and tells Claudius that he's gonna go hide behind a curtain and spy on the interaction between Hamlet and his mother because spying on situations has been working so well for him. Claudius has a whole soliloquy about how he basically committed the crime and now he goes to pray. He's on his knees praying his little heart away. Hamlet comes in and is like, oh my God, I think now's the time I do it. Now's the time I strike. Now is the time that I get the revenge that my ghost father, the floating shopping list, told me to get. But then he thinks about his mother, Gertrude, and he decides that this is not the time, so he goes away. Act three, scene four. Polonius comes in to mansplain to Gertrude how she can get information out of her son and is like, hey, I'm gonna go be behind this curtain. If you need me, excuse me. If you need me at any time, let me know. Hamlet comes in and is like, yo mom, I'm really not happy about the fact that you marry my dead dad's brother and I really wish you hadn't done that. And Gertrude's like, yo, you're really scaring me. I really am afraid that you're gonna kill me right now. So Polonius hears this from behind the curtain and starts screaming for help because he thinks Hamlet's about to kill the queen. Hamlet in a rage of just delirium and anger and God knows what else, acid, who knows, stabs through the curtain, Polonius is hiding behind and kills him. Kill count, where's the kill count? Okay, kill count. Let's see how much worse this gets, huh? Right after Polonius dies, who makes a visit? None other than the ghost. Gertrude tries to front like she can't see him, but she can see him and she knows damn well what's going on. And she's like, hey, listen, I'm doing the best I can. I'm a woman in the 1600s. Not much is expected of me now. This scene ends with Hamlet basically being like, hey, listen, I'm gonna kill Claudius. So you just don't take part in this at all. And you know what? You'll be fine. And Gertrude's like, this might as well happen. Okay, now it's time for a brief intermission. Just kidding, Shakespeare didn't write his plays to have intermission, so sit back down. Where we last ended, Polonius is in the lead of our kill count over here. Act four, scene one, baby. Oh, act four is a doozy, bear with me. All that happens in act four, scene one is Gertrude tells Claudius that Hamlet killed Polonius. Act four, scene two. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern find Hamlet and yell, and they're like, dude, where's the body? And he's like, 
mm, what body? And they're like, dude, we know about Polonius. Just tell us what's going on. And he's like, hey, I'll come take you to the body. Just follow me. Act four, scene three. Claudius has another monologue about how messed up his life has gotten ever since he killed his brother and married his brother's ex-wife. And also in this monologue, he decides to send Hamlet to England because he doesn't want to deal with him anymore. Tweedledee and Tweedledum come back to tell Claudius that they failed at their one job. Claudius then questions Hamlet on where the body is. He finally reveals that Polonius's body is in the lobby. He then tells Hamlet that he's getting on the next boat to England because he can't deal with his crazy ass. Act four, scene four. Before Hamlet leaves for England, he decides to break up with his girlfriend Ophelia because he's like, listen, things are gonna get worse before it gets better. Act four, scene five. Ophelia comes in wanting to confront the queen about what happened to her father because now she's gone insane since all of the men in her life have gone away. So she sings a spooky song about how her father died and she makes it obvious that she's not dealing with any of this well. After Ophelia leaves, Gertrude and Claudius hear from a messenger that Laertes found out what happened to his father and is basically coming back to Elsinore to kill everyone and run the place. So Laertes comes in, guns a blazing, and is like demanding answers about his father. Gertrude tries to mend the situation by letting Laertes know that Claudius had nothing to do with Polonius' death. But before Claudius can tell Laertes that it was Hamlet. Crazy Ophelia comes back, but this time with flowers. After Ophelia leaves, Claudius basically teams up with Laertes to come up with a plan to revenge his father's death so that they can both get justice and peace in the kingdom again. Act four, scene six. I promise we're almost at act four. So Horatio is just like straight chilling and a sailor comes to him and gives him letters from Hamlet, basically saying like, hey, I'm coming back to Elsinore, and you know what? I've got big plans for Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Act four, scene seven. Laertes and Claudius come up with a genius plan because all genius plans are created by two men. Laertes is going to challenge Hamlet to a duel, but instead of dulling his sword like he normally would, he's gonna have a sharp sword. And to ensure the fact that he's going to kill Hamlet, he's even going to stick his sword in some poison so that even when he scrapes him, if the cut doesn't kill him, the poison sure will. And to make sure that this plan is foolproof, Claudius even then suggests to take it a step further and to have a cup of poison on standby. During this, Gertrude comes in to inform them that she has found Ophelia dead in the water. So we have Polonius here. Rest in peace, Kate Winslet. Oh my god, she survived the Titanic, but she couldn't survive her father's passing, so she killed herself in water? That's, that's irony, I think. Obviously, this upsets Laertes a lot, so he gets all riled up again. Claudius is pissed that Gertrude came to them with this news while they were planning on killing Hamlet, so he drags her off and is like, great, now I'm gonna have to fix this. Act five, scene one. Two grave diggers prepare to make Ophelia's burial, and they're kinda on the fence about it because they're making it a proper burial, even though she did take her own life, which is not okay in the eyes of the Lord. Hamlet is finally back from Elsinore and he comes strolling through with his buddy Horatio. They're just casually walking through the cemetery when they see the two grave diggers setting up the grave. So he goes to approach the one grave digger about one of the skulls he has, which is where the famous imagery of Hamlet and the skull comes in. It's a common misconception that this is where the to be or not to be speech takes place, but actually all that really happens between Hamlet and the skull is, I knew this guy, he was the king's jester, he used to make me laugh, this skull smells bad, I wanna leave. And that's all that happens with the skull. After the gravedigger leaves, Horatio and Hamlet see their three favorite people stroll in, which is Gertrude, Claudius, and Laertes. 
and they notice that they're bringing in a body to bury in the grave that has now been recently dug and Hamlet realizes that this is Ophelia's funeral. Hamlet and Laertes start arguing about who loved her more, which is kind of weird in my opinion, but we're gonna move on from that. Act 5, scene 2, the grand finale, ladies and gentlemen. Hamlet and Horatio are having a little powwow together where Hamlet basically confesses to Horatio that when Rosencrantz and Guildenstern went back to England, Hamlet switched the original orders with new orders that he wrote on behalf of King Claudius, where he basically said, kill whoever hands you this letter. So when Rosencrantz and Guildenstern handed the letter to their bosses or whatever, they read it and said, oh God, now I have to kill these fools. <laughs> Let's look at the scoreboard, ladies and gentlemen. And now we got two more on the board. Tweedledee and Tweedledum are officially on the kill count. While Horatio and Hamlet are having this powwow, Polonius 2.0 shows up, his name's Osric, and basically lets Hamlet know that Laertes is challenging him to a duel. So we're finally in our last moments of the show, which is the epic duel between Laertes and Hamlet, and Hamlet is winning by a landslide. He knocks Laertes to the ground, and Hamlet goes to help Laertes up, but while Laertes is getting helped up, he takes his sword, boom! stabs Hamlet across the thigh. In some epic combat, whatever, they end up switching swords. So Hamlet gets the sword with the poison on it. And in the midst of all this, Claudius is over here going, hey, you know what? Maybe you guys should like take a break and like get a drink. So he offers the drink to Hamlet and Hamlet refuses. So instead of Hamlet taking the drink, who volunteers his tribute no other than Gertrude, but she has no idea there's poison in it, or maybe she does. It depends on how you interpret Hamlet. So she takes a big old gulp, and she just goes back to chill by her seat. Laertes and Hamlet go back to dueling. Hamlet finally stabs Laertes a couple times with the poisonous sword, and his mother starts to keel over and die because of the poison in the cup which ultimately takes her life, which means it's time to look at the kill count, baby. Number five. <laughs> Boom, there, there she is. We've got Laertes dying over here and he's finally like, listen, Hamlet, I'm on my deathbed. I need you to know something. I had nothing to do with this. This was all your uncle's idea. So Hamlet and Laertes make up right before Laertes dies. I have a feeling we're gonna have to get it out a few more times. Poor Laertes, but you know what? Let's be real. This guy, he never stood a chance. Hamlet finally takes the poisonous sword and stabs the heck out of Claudius finally bringing his tyranny to an end. Which means I have to reach back and get that board again. Kill count number seven, people. We're getting close to the end here. You had a good run, my dude, but ultimately you were gonna die. I don't know how to finish that, I don't know. It stopped recording at some point, I have no idea when it stopped. And our final consensus for the kill count, you might ask? It's everyone except Horatio. So there you have it, folks. Hamlet, as told by a drunk white girl on the internet. I hope you found this video to be entertaining, considering to thine own self be true and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. In other words, as long as you stay true to yourself, you'll never be lying to anyone, so always be your most authentic self and you'll be able to run the world. Yes. That was a quote from Hamlet by William Shakespeare. This got weirdly serious and silly at the same time. Maybe we should try this again sometime.